going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a new gaming phone that just released and in fact this can be turned into a full-fledged gaming console slash gaming PC it's actually ridiculous how much power this thing has and these awesome new features definitely make it one of the best gaming phones on the market right now this is known as the Red Magic 7S Pro, and it's powered by the all-new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So we do have an upclock on that GPU core, and when it comes to performance, this thing doesn't disappoint in emulation and native Android gaming. And by the way, this has 18 gigabytes of RAM, which is definitely overkill for an Android device, but it's still really nice to know you have it. If we take a look at the front of the unit, you might notice that there's no signs of a front-facing camera, and that's because it's using an under-display camera, which gives us much more screen real estate. We don't have any notches or punch holes here, and I know a lot of people have been looking forward to phones like these. Red Magic does offer this in a few different colors, but this one is the camo version. And you might notice we still have that signature Red Magic fan in the back here. So we've got a built in cooling fan to keep that CPU nice and chilly. So, yeah, this thing is super quick. I mean, overall performance is absolutely amazing. We've got that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and I suspected we'd get some amazing performance out of this device. And if you take a look online, you'll see a lot of in-depth reviews on the 7S Pro, but there's one main feature here that I was really excited about. Like I mentioned, this phone can actually be transformed into a console slash gaming PC, and that's the main thing I want to take a look at in this video. I've personally been super excited about these new features. Now, I'm a big fan of using DeX with my Samsung phones to turn it into kind of a desktop. I also enjoy using Ready4 for Motorola, but when it comes to these gaming phones, they have been lacking in the HDMI or video out department, but I think that's going to change with the 7S Pro. Here's a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we've got that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. This should offer a little better GPU performance than the original Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 non-plus version, but we still got that Arduino 730 GPU with a little bit of an overclock on it. You can pick this up with 12 to 18 gigabytes of RAM. It uses LPDDR5 RAM. When it comes to storage, they offer 256, 512, or 1 terabyte. Unfortunately, no micro SD card, and the one we have here has 512 gigabytes of storage. A 6.8 inch AMOLED display at 1080 by 2400 up to 120 hertz. A 5000 milliamp hour battery with 135 watt quick charging capabilities. Now this only comes with a 65 watt charger, but if you had a 135, you can charge this up from 0 to 100% in 15 minutes. And as for the operating system, we've got Android 12 with Red Magic 5.5 UI. Moving over to some benchmarks, first up we've got Geekbench 5, single core, 1336, multi, 4109. Really strong single and multi-core performance out of this new chip. Next on the list we've got 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, 2952, and I did want to run the original Wildlife, but it was just maxed out when I ran it on this device. And finally, we've got Antutu with a 1,107,517. We've got an uplift of about 100,000 points here over the original Snapdragon Gen 1 non-plus version, and it really comes down to that GPU. Turning this new phone into a console slash gaming PC is actually pretty easy. You can cast wirelessly if you want to. Personally, I'm not into that. I've always experienced a lot of lag. They also offer a new app, and we'll take a look at that by the end of the video. And with that, you can mirror the screen over USB to a Windows PC. But the method I prefer is USB Type-C to HDMI. You can pick up a cheap adapter, USB Type-C on one end, HDMI on the other, and in between you can get whatever you like. I mean, there's tons of different models out there. You can get them with SD card slots, USB ports, Ethernet ports, it's really up to you. But what I'm going to be using in this video is a USB Type-C to HDMI dock. I'll leave a link for it in the description. I've also got power in and three USB ports to connect mice, keyboard, and controllers to your device. All right, so first up, we've got mirror mode. I'm just gonna put it right here in the HDMI dock and we'll start to mirror the screen. There's a bunch of different phones on the market that do have this capability. I actually wish that more budget phones had this. This is kind of the basic method in getting it up and running on a bigger screen. I've got a mouse and keyboard connected here. Uh, it's just plugged into the dock. We've got zero latency because we're connected over USB Type-C basically. It's a USB Type-C to HDMI dock with some USBs that will function with the phone itself. So once I start up a game, it will go into landscape mode. But as you can see in this mode, it's going to keep the same aspect ratio of the phone screen. We've got those black bars on the top and bottom. I mean, we still have a lot more screen to work with here. And for some people, it might not be a deal breaker, but we'll get into the other mode in a second. I just wanted to show you this functionality and it does work out really well. 
So the monitor I have here does up to 165 hertz at 1080p, but the adapter only does up to 120. So we're at 120 hertz here out of USB Type-C to HDMI. And a game like Minecraft from the Google Play Store does support 120. So we can play it here on the big screen at 120 hertz. Super smooth, looks really good, and we've got more than enough power to play a game like this. I mean, the mobile version of Minecraft has been on the market for a while, so I suspected we'd have really good performance. I've got this set to 20 chunks, we've got fancy graphics on, and it's more than playable, but Red Magic has added some really awesome features to their HDMI out on the new 7S Pro, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. Like I said, you can turn this new phone into basically a little Android-powered gaming PC, and if you're familiar with the Red Magic phones, you know we have a little gaming switch over here on the side. This will bring us into their Red Magic time. I think that's what they're still calling it. And now we're basically in console mode. So this actually works out really well for FPS games and things like that. Any game you want to use a keyboard with will work with this because we do have some new mapping features built in. We can turn privacy mode on with the phone screen or you could leave it on. But you can use the phone screen independently from the big screen we have here. And I'm going to go ahead and launch Genshin Impact. If you play this on Android, you know we're still lacking proper keyboard support and controller support. You have to use a third-party app to use those things. And Red Magic has included one with this whole setup here. So we can map a keyboard and mouse to any on-screen touch point. And with the Red Magic phones, we also have a few different gaming settings. So down in the lower left-hand corner, we can set this to Rise Mode. We can set it to Eco or Balanced, and basically in Rise mode, we're going to get the max performance out of this new Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus. And in this mode, we can run Genshin Impact at the highest settings, 60 FPS. But the coolest thing about this whole setup is the ability to map our keyboard. So this app is already built in to the Red Magic phone, and we can set this up basically any way we want with a keyboard. You can map these buttons independently. You can use the left click and right click on the mouse itself or just set, you know, keyboard buttons for whatever you want on screen. And I'm just going to create a little profile here. And with this, I probably should go with uh, right click and left click on the mouse for some of my action buttons, but I just went with a few keyboard buttons. I'll save the profile. And once we do this, you'll notice that the mouse isn't locked. But if we press the middle button here, it'll lock that camera movement in. So now I'm playing Genshin Impact for Android on a big screen from my phone with a mouse and keyboard. And yeah, this does work out really well. It looks absolutely amazing over here, and I do wish we had higher refresh rates for Genshin Impact on Android. But unfortunately, from the settings, we can only go up to 60 FPS. And right now, we're totally maxed out at 60 FPS, and it's running really smooth. Every once in a while, there is a hiccup. I guess that's shader cache loading. I always get that on Android, and given that this is one of the most powerful phones on the market right now, you will have that on lower end devices. But yeah, overall this definitely offers kind of a PC experience when it comes to Android gaming. And uh, we can also do emulation like this, I'll show you that in a little bit. But let's go ahead and move over to something else, we'll do an FPS, let's go with, um, we'll do Call of Duty Mobile. And one thing I noticed with this was I did have to turn that mouse sensitivity way down. So I'll just head down to my settings. I'm in rise mode and we are at high settings here, extreme FPS. Turn this down a little bit. We can turn the opacity of the on-screen buttons down so you don't see them if that's going to bug you. But yeah, for FPS games, using a mouse and keyboard on Android is pretty awesome. And of course, in this mode, we can also run emulation. So I've just got an Xbox Elite controller connected over Bluetooth to the device. We're running PSP right now using PPSSPP. Tekken 6, I'm at 7x resolution, and it runs absolutely amazingly. I mean, I've had really good luck with the Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus. I had really good luck with the original Gen 1 when it comes to even GameCube and PS2. And speaking of PS2, let's test a little bit out here. Gran Turismo 4, Ether SX2, still using that Xbox controller, 3x resolution, OpenGL back in, running at full speed. I mean, it looks really good like this. And when it comes to GameCube and Wii, we can go up to 720p with this. And for the lower end stuff, you're not going to have any issues running it. 
even N64 at 1440p on the Gen 1 works really well. But there is one more mode that I want to show you here with the 7S Pro. This method is going to come in really handy for people who like to stream mobile games. Uh, Red Magic has their new Red Magic Studio available for Windows. I'm on a Windows 10 machine right now. And uh, you can head over to their website to download it. Basically, I'm just going to go ahead and plug my device in. I'm using a USB 3.0 cable. We'll go to USB. And there we have it. So I'm now streaming my phone screen to the PC screen. And from the settings, we've got a lot of different choices. We can uh, set up our sound output, our sound input. Recording, we can set it up to 1080, 20 megabits. And it all works from within the app itself. Input, we can change our mouse sensitivity. Got a couple different modes here, and hopefully more will be added. These are modes that are actually built into the Red Magic phone for different games. Ultra wide angle mode, hunting mode, and we can check the version from here. But this makes it really easy to record and stream your games. Up in the top left hand corner, you can see I'm on USB 3.0, but this will work over USB 2.0. I didn't run into any issues running it on 2.0, but I'm sure we'd get much better quality and response time with USB 3.0. But there's zero latency here, the way it sits right now. And we'll go ahead and start up Apex Legends. And with this method, you can set up a keyboard and mouse, just like we did over HDMI. Check out right here, or you can use a controller, it's really up to you. But it does make it really easy to use a keyboard and mouse with games that usually don't support them. And uh, having the accuracy definitely makes a difference. Do some fine tweaking with that uh, sensitivity and you should be good to go. But this is a really good option for people who want to stream their games or just record their mobile games in general. So yeah, having these new features built into the 7S Pro definitely makes it one of the best Red Magic phones that's ever released and not to mention that CPU. I mean, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is an absolute monster and I've been able to run anything that I've thrown at it. It works absolutely amazingly. And with the cooling system built into this Red Magic device, you're not going to see any thermal throttling. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see on the Red Magic 7S Pro, just let me know in the comments below. I can do a full emulation video. We can test out some more native Android games. It's really up to you. Just let me know what you want to see down below. And like always, thanks for watching.